Hi guys. You guys are probably like, why are you in Colorado? Which is fair. And we will get to that. I feel like I have a lot to catch you guys up on actually. But um, first things first, it's 60 degrees right now and I'm thriving. I'm thriving. We all know how I feel about cold weather and how I feel about hot weather, okay? And if you're new here, I hate hot weather with a passion. The next two days are gonna be a high 55 in thunderstorms. <laughs> That's why I'm in Winter Park. <laughs> Just kidding. But the weather is a bonus. Right, bud? Blue and I really are thriving though. Thunderstorms tomorrow and 55. Act alive like you're happy. This is our favorite kind of weather. Also, you guys, I don't know. I don't know why these fashion companies aren't calling me. I have on two types of camo broken up by tie-dye. Like, I'm a fashion influencer. It's crazy. <laughs> no, but seriously, I looked at my reflection today and I was like, girl, you gotta put in like a little effort, you know? It doesn't hurt to at least match. <laughs> Man, these rain clouds are getting uh, serious. I wonder if we're gonna have rain tonight. Yep, would you look at that? It's supposed to rain all next hour. Well, we should probably go make a dinner then before the rain comes. All right, bud, let's turn around. Back to where we go. I feel really bad since we're obviously a lot farther away from where we were last time you guys saw us. We've been driving a lot the last day and a half and Blue's been stuck in the car a lot, so you can tell he's uh, happy to be out of the car. He keeps like running so far ahead. He's like, freedom, right? Bub, Bubby, are you excited to be out of the car? That was really unnecessary, Blue. He just knocked me over. Was that necessary? I was just calling you to come over and not run into me. Anyways, my point exactly, dude's got a lot of energy. <laughs> All right, pup. What do I wanna eat tonight? That is the question. many options. Come here. Sit. Down. Good boy. No. Down. Wait. Okay, go ahead. The boy. The best boy he is. I gotta figure out what the heck I want to eat. I can make a peanut butter and jelly. I can make oatmeal. Although I think for nutritional purposes, I'm gonna try to do something other than oatmeal. Not, sometimes I get afraid that I don't have enough variety. Maybe a camper meal. I don't know what I want. Chili Mac though. Decisions, decisions. That could be fun. Although I'm still confused on how to season this pan. This would be easiest. <laughs> Indecision. You guys, I didn't realize cast irons were so dramatic in the sense that they need like really special care <laughs> and you have to season them, whatever that means. I'm trying to get my brother to call me back so he can tell me how to properly uh, use it because I don't want to heat up soup in the cast iron and do it wrong. So I guess I'm just gonna do a camper meal for tonight and then I'm also gonna make coffee too, cause like I've been saying, late night coffee's my thing recently, so. I guess we will just heat up some water with the jet boil. Easy peasy. Where's my jet boil? There you are.
Well, he's a little late, because I already made the decision. Hey. Hey, what's going on? How do I season <laughs> cast iron? <laughs> you, you gotta bake it. Um, so it's, uh, you lightly coat it with, like, a cooking oil, and then you bake it at a really high heat for, like, three hours or something like that. Oh. Okay. Yeah, most of them come with a seasoning on them. Uh-huh. Um, if it's, like, really shiny and slick, it's probably been seasoned already, but, um, a lot of people like to take that off and do their own. Uh-huh. Um, or if it's, if you saw the packaging, I should say, or even, like, you could send me a picture of it and I can tell you if it looks seasoned or not, but. Okay. It's, it's just, it's almost like an enamel or, like, a paint or, or something. I don't even know how to describe it. But. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you a picture and you can let me know. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Aw. My brother. Okay. Well, I'm still confused and I still am just going to do the camper meal, so. Um, we will tackle the cast iron on a later date. Oh no, my water's boiling and I'm unprepared. Bubby, I'm unprepared. What do I do? Oh no. Oh no. Unprepared. How long do I heat you for? Ah! Ah! It's spitting out boiling water at me. It was so rude. Okay. All right. Cool. That'll be done by the time sun sets. Where is my coffee mug? You guys, since I've been robbed, I have been a mess. I've been a mess. I have no clue where anything is. Did I? Oh. See, it's buried. It's buried. That would make sense. Okay. Easy peasy. <laughs> no big deal. All right, you guys, so here's why we came to Colorado from Wyoming. The main two reasons are, number one, my tire, the leak in it is terrible, okay? I have to fill that sucker up like every 12 hours or I wake up like dead flat. So it's really annoying and I, I happen to have warranties on my tires through Discount Tire, which if you are gonna be living this lifestyle, make sure you have warranties on your tires. I swear it saves you it saves you so much. I always use my warranties. I always end up needing something done. So definitely worth it. However, the nearest discount tire was um, in Colorado. So I wanted to get to Colorado to get my tire fixed, to be honest, because I'm just really sick of filling it up every 12 hours. And I'm afraid it's gonna like pop or something. So we're currently on our way to Denver so that I can get that done. The other thing is, um, my P.O. box is also in Denver, or on the outskirts of it, rather. And since I decided to go on this 50-state road trip, I can't really keep a P.O. box that's in Colorado because I'm not always just going to be around Colorado to pick up packages and what have you. So I'm going to go to my P.O. box, pick up what's... Wasp? Get out of here. Or whatever you were. Um, I'm going to go to my P.O. box, pick up what's in there, and then shut it down. I was reading that if you open like a P.O. box through UPS, you can actually pay a fee to have all of your packages shipped and forwarded to a UPS store near you. So it's perfect for somebody like me where I don't know what state I'm going to be in when. So if I have packages, I can just forward them to the state that I'm in. So it's kind of like a mobile P.O. box, if you will. So I have those two things that I need to do. Also, my friends are in Denver, so I miss them and want to see them. I'm gonna go catch up with some of my friends. And Wyoming was being really brutal to me. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you guys what happened to me at this Starbucks with this woman in Wyoming. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already know, because I already told everybody on there. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely should, but oh. My gosh, after getting robbed and then having this issue with this woman at Starbucks, I was like, get me out of Wyoming. Get me out. I forgot my creamer. Excuse me, cooler. Okay. Let's not break the fan, Maria. It's not the fan's fault. 
Ooh, I need to get more ice tomorrow. It's all gonna work out though. I know I'm kind of going through the last few states a little bit quickly. Like I, w I wish I would have stayed in Idaho longer and obviously I just <laughs> blew through Wyoming and I'm not gonna be in Colorado very long either. Although you guys have seen me do stuff in Colorado like all this past spring. I'm gonna be going back through all of these states that are up here in this corner of the United States next summer when I go up to Alaska. So I'm not really too worried about it because I'm too, oh my gosh. Is that a deer or a coyote? Something just crossed the street, but I don't have my glasses on. Gotta love wilderness. This is actually the forest road, you guys, that uh, Blue and I saw the moose on, if you remember that video. Oh my gosh, I love car camping. So, we gotta be careful out here. What was I saying? Oh yeah, um, next summer when I'm going up to Alaska, I'll be going back through all of these states that I just went through. So Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and probably Washington as well. We'll be getting a part two, so no worries. I'm not missing out on the best parts of the states because we'll be going back through it. No big deal. I'm so excited for the southwest part of Colorado, like the Four Corners and Telluride. Oh, it's gonna be so fun to go through. And by then, we're gonna have the new rig, so. <laughs> this espresso ground is so much better than coffee ground. I need to only repurchase espresso. This is so good. This is from Sawtooth Coffee Company, the Sawtooth Mountains. So see, I need to go back through Idaho simply to get more coffee. <laughs> All right, this Chili Mac should be done by now. Wow, that coffee is so good. Holy cow. Let's see what this is all about. Should we go in the car, bub? What do you think? Yeah, let's go, puppy. We gotta go in the car. Wow. I am so excited for the rain tomorrow. I'm gonna be hyper and happy tomorrow. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, car time, come on. Up, up. Oh, Bubby, how am I supposed to get on this bed? <laughs> this is Blue's new favorite thing, to sleep on the platform while he waits for me to come back. Did you just unlock the car? Hold on. Yeah, you just... Blue, you just unlocked the car. We need to switch spots here, Bob, and then you can get back on the platform with me. Ugh, the struggles of living in a car. I think we need more space, pup. What do you say? I know, buddy. I know you're demanding nighttime attention. Let me tell this story, and then we'll get to bed, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys a bedtime story, okay? What happened to me at the Starbucks in Wyoming? <laughs> he couldn't wait. Oh, he's sleeping on top of me tonight. <laughs> okay, pup. He was like, I wasn't going to wait for you to tell your story. That was enough of me not being on the platform with you. I'm telling you guys, our new routine. Blue takes it super serious. Here's your scary bedtime story of what happened to me at Starbucks, okay? Oh my gosh, I'm honestly, it's been... It's... 
it's been a couple days and I'm still fuming about it. Like, I'm still mad about it. And it's hard to make me mad. Like, it really is. It's hard to get me to fume. So, anyways. Blue and I were at a Starbucks. I was editing outside. There was a couple that came out and sat at the table across from us. And they, like, clearly were having lunch at Starbucks. They had multiple food items. They were asking me a ton of questions about Blue. They were being super friendly, super complimentary. I let Blue go over there to greet them, say hi to them. So, like, the three of them were all having a moment. And I'm just, like, working on my computer. <laughs> and out of the corner of my eye, I see this lady feeding Blue food. Okay? She didn't ask me. She didn't talk to me about it. She just started, like, willy-nilly feeding Blue her Starbucks food. Like, junk food. Now... One thing about Blue that's recently changed is he's been having joint issues, okay? So he's on a very strict diet, and he's on supplements. Like, he's been... He's a lot better now, but he was struggling there for a minute. And I'm not saying I never give him human food. Because I do, but it's what I know isn't going to upset his joints, make him feel worse, whatever. So I see this lady feeding Blue out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, Oh, I'm already, like, upset because she didn't talk to me about it. I'm like, who does that? So I'm like, Blue, get over here. Like, I call him over to me like, this isn't going to happen. On the way over back to the table, from their table, she's holding more food in her hand. And she's like, acting like she's going to go give him more. And I look at her kind of like, are you nuts? Like, are you crazy? Because I like, I saw what was going on and clearly I was not okay with it and called my dog back over to me. And I wasn't like, ha ha ha, okay, Blue, like, come back over. I, I saw it and as soon as I saw it, I was like, uh-uh, Blue, come here. Like, I said, no, come here. And then I give her this look, like, not happening, lady. And she goes, oh, can he have more? Like, can he have more food? And I said, no, he can't actually. He's on a very strict diet. He can't be eating that. And she looks at me dead in my face and lofts up food to Blue. And he, like, catches it midair. I've never been... So, like, blatantly just, like, disrespected to my face. Like, she asked permission. I said no. And she was like, F you. I'm feeding the dog. And the husband immediately goes, are you serious? To the wife. And she looks at him like, what? Like, and then he looks at me and he's like, he mouths like, I'm so sorry. And because I was, like, fuming. Like, I was about to stand up and, like, square up with this Karen, for lack of better words. Like, I was, I was mad. Because the food wasn't good for Blue, which is why I said no. Okay. But it was the disrespect. Like, the food isn't going to kill Blue. Like, clearly he's fine. I get that. It's the principle that... <laughs> he's just sick. Okay, I'll move in a second. Let me finish this story. It's the principle that this woman had no idea of Blue's medical history, what he was allergic to. Like, what if what she fed him could have, like, been seriously detrimental or harmful to this dingus back here? Like, you just never know. And that's, like, you can't do that to people's dogs. And it was just, like, the blatant disrespect of her doing it without asking and then her asking me, me saying no, and straight to my face and just lofted up to Blue. Like... I'm still mad. I'm still mad about it. I'm still mad. There's few things that are going to upset me or make me mad, but my dog is one of them. So that was another reason I got out of Wyoming because I was like, the people here are stealing and disrespectful. Like they're just not a great group. So I got to go. Um, Apparently, I'm just running into the worst of the worst in Wyoming. I know, obviously, there's great people there, so I was, it was a joke, but... I kick myself now that I didn't yell at her and cause a scene, and I didn't want to because the husband was apologetic, and I felt bad for him. Like, imagine being married to a woman like that. I'm sure he, he gets put in bad situations from her all the time and has to, like, clean up the mess, and so I didn't want to do that to him. And, like, I was mad, and it wasn't good for Blue, but Blue was going to live, so it was, like... I'm just going to sit here and fume silently. But looking back, I'm kicking myself. I wish I would have yelled at her because you know she does that to every dog owner she ever meets. Like, that's just not okay. So, PSA to everybody. Like, it is not okay to do that. Like, you have to address owners, honestly, even before you approach a dog because you don't know a dog's history ever. They could look friendly and not be friendly or be dealing with anxiety or whatever. 
You shouldn't approach pet a dog without asking the owner first. And you definitely should not be feeding an animal that you don't know its medical history or anything about that dog. Oh my gosh. Anyways, it's fine. <laughs> like, Blue's gonna live and I'll stop being mad in probably like another two days, but... Man, that's just crazy. Have you guys ever had something happen like that, like with your animal, where someone just like blatantly disrespected? it? Like, how did you handle that? Because did you enjoy that Starbucks food, buddy? He's like, I thought she was really nice. <laughs> oh, Popper Lou. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I'm sure the next week will be hopefully full of better events for Blue and I. <laughs> less stressful, less frustrating things. Right? Yeah. We love Winter Park. My favorite coffee shop in the world is here. Like, we have Winter Park down pat, so I'm excited to be here for a couple days. Yeah, huh. Are you excited, Blubby? On that note, we're gonna go to bed. Say goodnight, Blue. Say goodnight. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.